Hey everybody, this is Edwin and this is our, our weekly uh, discussions uh, about anarchy in America, basically. That's what, at least that's what we're, uh, we've been talking about. Uh, we are here with uh, Henry Grigion from New York City. Hey Henry, how are you? Hey, how's everybody? And also we have uh, Dr. Annette Tejero from Las Vegas. How are you, doctor? Oh, we need some sound. Hey, Dr. Annette, you are on mute. So let me unmute you. Right Oh, there you go. How are you, doctor? Good, good. Everything's good. Great, great, great. And today we are uh, going to be having a very special discussion and conversation with uh, Tech Sergeant Aja, uh, Aja Smith of, uh, of Riverside. How are you, Aja? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. It's, it's a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day, even though we're here in California and Governor Newsom is making us wear masks even more. <laughs> right, right, right. Welcome right. to the club. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about uh, a little bit about that. But Aja, you know, you are our special person today and in the hot seat, uh, like we like to call Hot seat. Hot, hot seat. So what are you doing? And I hear something. Uh, that you are running for U.S. Congress. Any, yes. any truth to that? <laughs> yes, I am running again for United States Congress here in the 41st Congressional District, which is Riverside County, Moreno Valley, Riverside, Paris, and Yoruba, part of Mira Loma and Good Hope. And right now my campaign is going well. We hit the $100,000 mark for um, fundraising. We still have a long ways to go because we're going to be putting a lot of boots on the ground so we can finally unseat Mark Takano. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, and for those of you who are going to like what uh, you hear from uh, Aja Smith, uh, Aja, what is your website where they can donate to? It's Aja, A-J-A Smith, for F-O-R Congress dot com. Oh, great, great, great. And welcome to the show. Uh, Thank you. Before we talk about the hot topics of the day, um, we have a very special day called Juneteenth. Uh, Dr. Nick, what is special about Juneteenth? Well, Juneteenth in, in um, 1865, uh, there was a general that came and kind of gave uh, the news that the war had ended for the Civil War. Obviously, this meant a lot um, to people that were looking forward to the end of slavery, to the reunification of the United States. So it's come up with a Juneteenth is kind of like a squish together of the two terms, you know, June and then being the, um, the 19th in 1865. So mm -hmm. um, great time to celebrate the unity of our country. Awesome. And uh, Aja, Aja Smith, Tech Sergeant Aja Smith, what is, you know, what does Juneteenth mean to you? Well, Juneteenth means to me as a Black American and a um, Black Republican as well, it shows that how, how much our history is not being taught in public schools. And it's really amazing that I've seen many people who didn't even know about Juneteenth. I guess I was very fortunate to go to school and learn about um, different histories and especially black history, my own history. But I knew about Juneteenth growing up with my grandparents and my mother. And it's never been a national federal holiday. It was always celebrated in Texas, but we knew about Juneteenth. And as Dr. Um, Nanette said, you know, after two years, their uh, slaves in Texas didn't even know that they were free. And that's something that we really need to start talking about in other histories, especially with Tulsa, Oklahoma, Rosewood. We need to start talking about a lot of great firsts um, with inventors, politicians. So a lot of our young people can have a better understanding on who contributed in America and all of our accomplishments instead of pushing on the negative constantly that we see on mainstream media. And this is an important day. So I. You know, I'm glad that the president started talking about it because I, I remember back in the Clinton days, the Bush days, I am old enough to even vaguely remember Ronald Reagan. But at the same time, we've never had this full conversation. So I'm glad he brought it up to light. And I hope uh, both sides, we can work together to start having most of these conversations and implementing it in the school educational school system, especially the public educational school system, where we see 
the far left, the socialists and the communists are tearing down statues. And to me, I, I know everybody has their opinion when it comes to the statues coming down, but that's part of history. And I look back at 1984, um, Orwellism and, and erasing history, we need to preserve it in different ways. And the, to me, it's, it's, it's good that everybody's talking about it, but at the same time for most of us and a lot of us, especially in the black community, we've always known about it. And it's something that we could move forward and work in a bipartisan manner. You know, I get elected and hopefully it does pass as a federal holiday. And so we can start working towards this and we can also start preserving and teaching our youth and everybody else the different histories and the different um, dates of significance in our country. Right, right. right. What are your thoughts about uh, Juneteenth celebration, Henry? It's incredible that um, I'm seeing here in New York, uh, the governor here actually signed an executive order. Good things, the many things that he's, he hasn't done that's great. But history itself, we see that the Republican and the Democratic Party, I find myself in a battle in the last couple of weeks with folks saying, what exactly is the history when it comes to both parties? And it's proud to know that uh, I believe it was the first 23 uh, congressional uh, 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 person that is African American are actually Republican. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of history that has to be taught. And when I was in school here in New York, we, we didn't, they didn't teach us this. I have to tell you, it's sad. So I agree with Aja that this has to come to light. I mean, we have to really get uh, our young kids that are now in the schools to get educated. So an incredible day today, uh, guys, to know that it wasn't really planned, but to have Aja Smith, a veteran, an African-American, strong female, to be today to discuss this, it's an honor, really. Thank you. It's an honor to talk about it. And just like everybody said, we, we really have to start focusing on the educational school systems. We have to start focusing on bringing to light and having these uncomfortable conversations sometime and start really sharing each other's accomplishments and our background so we can be united as one. Right, right, right. Well, uh, uh, Dr. Nett, politically, uh, you know, what, do you, what are you seeing uh, with the current uh, environment around the country and how uh, uh, both the left and the right are seeing uh, how to celebrate Juneteenth? Well, the, the thing about Juneteenth is it's always been around, as, uh, as Aja mentioned. Um, the the not so interesting part is that we have actually more division now rather than celebrating our differences together. People are actually promoting violence and having all kinds of other things go on instead. Another interesting part about the Republican Party and Aja, you appreciate this, the first woman ever elected to the U.S. House of Representatives was a Republican. Yes. Um, obviously, the first African Americans ever elected to Congress were also uh, Republicans. I don't think people realize that the first woman to go from the U.S. House and then become a U.S. Senator was also a Republican. Yes. If we don't learn from our history, and really go out and look at the positives and the things that we strive for, I don't think that we can ever have unity in lies and deception. And I, I'm, I'm looking at this and looking at our proud history and so grateful that we have an African American woman running for Congress in a district that will hopefully embrace her. Thank you. And it is because of your qualities, Aja. You should be so proud of yourself being a military um, person that has defended our country, defended our constitution. You are perfect for the job. Thank you so much. And you know, a little bit background with me, I come from a big family of first. Um, I'm a descendant of Basil Biggs. He was a free wow. man of color and his farm was actually used in the Civil War. And it's a historical Civil War site as well. My great uncle was a Tuskegee Airman. My grandfather was one of the first Black Chief Master Sergeants of the Air Force. He served in three wars. My grandmother, she was also in the Air Force. My other grandfather, my paternal grandfather, he was in the United States Navy. So they had to endure a lot of racism and segregation, but they never gave up. And that's what they instilled with me. 
don't ever give up and fight for what it's right. And to also um, bring to light our history, especially as black Americans. I, I come from a very cool, diverse background where my dad's side, they're, they're Democrat. My mother's side, they're mixed of Democrat and conservative. So I chose to be a conservative and Republican a long time ago. It was after the uh, Clinton administration when I started to learn more and more in the myth of the party switch. And so my values growing up always aligned as conservative. My mother was a, um, a Reagan Republican. Actually, she was a blue dog Democrat when Reagan was the governor of California. So learning a lot of those um, ideologies, I, I chose to be a Republican. And I, I'm not new to the Republican Party. I know a lot of people are new because of President Donald Trump and I, and I fully embrace that. But also we need to, as Republicans, start talking about our history in the party and the accomplishments, especially with minorities, what we've done, and not only minority in race, but also in gender as females. And like you said, Maggie Chase Smith, we've had Mia Love, we have Senator Tim Scott, and we go back to after um, the Civil War where the first um, black senators, they were Republicans. Yeah. And, and so you can go on, you can look everybody up, I do post some of it on my uh, my Facebook page, my campaign page, and my Twitter. You you can look at anybody who was a Republican. You have a lot of minorities who were, especially um, African Americans, and that's what we need to do: is start educating instead of deflecting and ignoring and embracing it. And that's what one of my goals is to do once elected in November. Yeah, you know, one thing I'm, I'm hearing is you have a strong <coughs> family background. Uh, you know, you know the history of, the, of, the, uh, of your family. Uh, you see that the, your family has history within the uh, U.S. government and the foundations of our, of our country. And, you know, what, what kind of, uh, you know, amazes me is the communities, uh, you know, now uh, aren't as family oriented. And it seems like, uh, you know, the, the black community shares uh, similar values that the Republican Party, uh, you know, shares. Uh, you know, any, uh, you know, what are, what are you seeing with family values and the minority community? Well, what I see with family values in the minority community, not only the black community, but the Hispanic and Latino community, the Asian community, and, and, and even um, every other community, we do share a common value when it comes to conservatism and republicanism, but it's the outreach that we have to do as a party to go into the communities with a good message that resonates and show this is what we stand for, capitalism, freedom, free markets, uh, family orient oriented um, uh, family values versus the far left where they've become more dependent in promoting to rely on government. And we have to really, as a party and as a messenger and as candidates and also the electeds and also have good organizations to really start going into the communities and not being afraid to go into the communities and have good conversation. Because if we don't have a strong message, we're going to see the same issues over and over again for the next 20 years. And that's why, oh, excuse me, that's why I admire people like uh, Senator Tim Scott, Sonny Johnson, Corinne Rankin, um, Blacks for Trump, the Legacy Republican Alliance, because we're in it to show that we're going to break the stereotypical narrative of the left and that we do value minorities and we welcome. We, we were the party that embraced and we started the civil rights and we also gave the women to right to vote and that's one thing that i hope that being in the party as a delegate and also on the platform committee we can start pushing this is because times change we can't stick with the same old message all the time we have to start going into and start having going into the churches especially and start saying, hey, do you really like what's going on here? Do you like higher taxes? Do you like how the, the opposite party is trying to silence your um, voice as a Christian? And you start with that type of conversation, then we can get more into depth. Love it, love it. You know, if, if you're liking what you see, uh, Aja, what is your website and how do people get in touch with you? 
You can go to my website at www.ajasmith, A-J-A Smith, for F-O-R, congress.com. Great, great. Let's switch gears and let's talk about the topic of the day. Uh, it seems like uh, there is a lot of, oh, geez, uh, a lot of instability in our, in our country and uh, a lot of talk about defunding uh, the police. And in fact, we're seeing a lot of uh, police uh, announce their retirement or just simply walking off the job. Uh, Dr. Ned, Henry, Aja, what are your thoughts uh, about the topic of the day? Look, can I, uh, let me ask uh, the, the person that's in the hot seat, obviously. Um, we have uh, Tim Scott, who is a great senator. He introduced the Justice Act uh, bill. What is your take, Aja, when you heard, I don't know if you heard this already, Senator Durham, a Democrat, he compared the bill to being a token issue and I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Senator Scott with an emotion. He broke down literally on the floor when he said, my soul hurts. How can this day and age on the U.S. Senate floor, can we have another senator say such, such a racist remark? What is your take on it, Ajay? It must hurt your soul like it hurts ours. What do you think? It hurt my soul. I get the same type of messages from the left and the same derogatory statements from them as well. And it needs to stop. If we're going to be mature adults and have good conversations and good bipartisan um, bills, we need to stop with the name calling. And a lot of people don't realize, uh, Senator Tim Scott, he is one of my favorite senators of all times. Him and I have a similar background. I was so happy that he was elected Actually, he was appointed and then elected him and me a love. And here he is trying to bring, um, have a bridge and to, to have um, new policy for accountability in our system of um, the police department. And I've actually talked to a couple of police officers and they said that they're glad that this is happening for accountability, transparency, and, and more training. You know, as, as a former military member, if our unit did bad in inspections or anything else, we didn't defund the unit. We did better training. We, we revamped. Sometimes I saw leaders get transferred, but we, we did not defund the unit. And it's something that's long overdue. And building community relationships with not only your police department, and what people need to realize, a lot of this stuff is local level. So as I talked about it before with other people, and, and even when I went to a uh, Riverside City Council meeting, we need to really have a um, strong conversation with our local electeds. And that's where we start. We don't say defund. And I know some people say, well, it doesn't really mean defund. Yes, it does, especially with the far, far left. They want to get rid of the police. Who are we going to call if we're in trouble? And I know some people have different opinions on the term defund, but I've observed for the past 20 years on how they use language and what their goal is. And I, 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 I was very heartbroken to hear um, Senator Tim Scott plead his case and how he talked about it on the Senate floor, but I am so glad that this is a bipartisan movement. And a lot of people don't even know Senator Tim Scott's record with opportunity zones. I mean, we, we started the justice reform under this administration. It was been long overdue. And it comes to a point where we have to start looking at the policies that are coming out of this administration, regardless if you like the president or not. This is something that we've been asking for for the past 20 or 30 years, and it's happening, and the far left are, are, are just cannot accept it. And I don't like what I'm hearing, even from everybody saying this, why is this happening? It's something that we wanted and as Americans, that needs to be addressed. Yeah, and today we're, we're still talking to uh, Aja Smith, uh, Tech Sergeant Aja Smith from the uh, U.S. Air Force, or formerly uh, uh, of the Air Force. Uh, uh, and she's running for the 41st uh, U.S. Congress in California, running against uh, 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 Takano, uh, uh, Representative Takano. Uh, so uh, Aja, how, how do people get in touch with you if they want to donate and support your campaign? 
You can go to my website at www.ajasmith4forcongress.com. And uh, you know, continue uh, our discussion about uh, defunding. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, municipalities are talking about uh, either defunding or ch shifting resources into more counselor roles and, and mental health roles uh, when they go out on domestic violence calls. Uh, Dr. Nett, you are a physician and I'm sure you talk to a lot of uh, social workers and mental health professionals. Do you think uh, transferring uh, responsibility from the police to uh, mental health uh, social workers is a good idea, especially when you're dealing with, uh, you, know, uh, you know, more violent domestic uh, issues? Uh, I do not fully embrace that kind of uh, solution you know, because it really isn't a solution. What happens is people who are used to dealing with mental health, although they may deal with people who are vile, volatile, emotional, they're not prepared to be in an unfamiliar surrounding, um, in a dangerous situation which could escalate. Our law enforcement is prepared for escalation of force or de-escalation of force. So throwing people that are not prepared in a situation that could escalate into extreme violence, uh, even death to an individual, is probably not the best way to go. Um, perhaps giving our officers more tools, providing stronger partnerships, um, re-educating uh, into new ideas, maybe new forms of dealing with certain situations, stopping the problems before they escalate into violence. Those are all well and nice, but when that 911 call comes, guess what? We can't go back in time and de-escalate the situation that perhaps exactly. started weeks or hours ago. Mm -hmm. Aja, I am impressed that you know the community so well. Yes. I've been involved in my community since I moved out here in 1988 and have always been instilled with my family going to the city council meetings, um, voting in every election, and that's what we need to do, especially on the local level, and also going and making relationships with our police departments, our fire chiefs, and everybody else, the school board meetings. We have to get more involved and engaged. As Tip O'Neill, our former House Speaker, said, all politics is local. So the things that you are dissatisfied in what your, what your local community is doing, you can't always look at Washington, D.C. and whoever's in the White House. You have to see who is actually running your city, who's your district attorney, who's the judges. Did you vote during those elections? Did you vote in the midterm, the primary, and special elections? And so, and even the um, local government elections. So you can't always say the federal government is to blame. You have to start going back to the grassroots of the local government because that is part of our structure as a republic. And that's the thing that I think we need to really re-educate when it comes to these hot topic issues going around the country. Great. And one other thing about um, what I'm looking at when we talk about defunding the police, or defunding it because it's not working properly or however it is that they want to spin it, how come we don't defund the public school systems since they're failing? I mean, in Nevada, we've, uh, we've been 47th to 52nd as far as, as level of uh, where our children are. Um, to have them score even lower sometimes than Guam is really, uh, how can I put it kindly? I, I can't. I can say that it's a failure. So do we defund then the public school system in Nevada? No, we, we don't defund it. We look at it. We examine it. We try and improve it. We look at states that are number one and number two and try yes. to implement some of those wonderful things that we see. If we can do anything as representatives, it is we can provide that kind of information to our local government and start changing the things below us. But we don't necessarily have to take that all to the federal government and it's not a one size fits all either. Yes, um, I, I, I'm so glad you mentioned the Department of Education and that's where the root causes of, to me, my observation, people may disagree with me or not, is part of the problem. If, if, you, if you're dissatisfied with different 
areas in your local government, I always ask people, have you been to the, the school board meeting and knowing what your children are being taught? Have you actually followed the money and how all the resources, your taxpayer money is going to these, um, the department of school, um, the school boards. And if you really wanna have these honest conversations, we can do it civilly, we can do it maturely and start talking about it, especially as us Republicans, who we are the champion. We're, we're very proactive when it comes to um, school choice and homeschooling. And I don't believe in getting rid of all public schools, but we should also give a choice for parents, and especially in the minority community, to start talking about school choice and private schools and home schools so they can see the difference. And you're absolutely right. Start looking at the educational school system. If you want to defund the police, I'm all for it. Hey, let's start going and looking into the Department of Education and the local school board. And that even applies to universities. A lot of young people are saying that college is too expensive. Well, start looking at these administrative costs. How much are these deans and, and professors are making? I'm not saying that they're not worth it, but they're making six figures. And here you're paying a hundred grand or 80 grand to go to college with a degree that you can't really find a job in. You need to start looking at the administration costs and where your um, tuition is going. So that's a good conversation to really start, especially as a party, and we can start having those open dialogues with um, people across the aisle, and especially when it comes to the local communities, especially the local communities of color. Well, and, and the other part of what we're looking at is, ultimately, anyone who's rich or an elite, they can always have personal bodyguards, they can always have personal security, but it is in our communities, our minority communities, that we need law enforcement to partner with our communities to stop the crime, the violence, the human sex and drug trafficking. So by saying we want to defund police, what they're essentially saying, Aja, is they want to defund our communities. Yes, they do. And, and it is so sad because I know so many great cops we can't say all police officers are horrible. I've seen and experienced bad policing before, but I don't label every single police officer the same. And a lot of them are trying to do good in the community by going and reaching out to a lot of young kids and going to the schools and saying, hey, you know, we're here for you. We're here to be, um, bring positive influence, food drives, toy drives. And, and to be involved in the community, you gotta remember too, they are human beings as well, and they have families as well. So we, we have to really start working with our local community um, entities, and we have to really start establishing relationships and how we, make, we can make it better. Hopefully next week, um, I'm supposed to have a scheduled meeting with one of the local police chiefs and start talking about these issues and what the policies are and how he feels about the new Justice Act with Senator Tim Scott and start maybe, and also reaching out to other community organizations. Even though people say I'm running on the federal level, but I'm still a member of the community and I'm taking that first initiative to do so, even though some people may say, well, you're running for federal, that's local, but I think we can start building bridges regardless of the levels of government to, and to start getting involved and educating and how we can have a mature di um, conversation about what's going on. You know, that, that's a great, great idea to bridge the uh, federal to the local. Uh, because as you said before, uh, everything is local. And in order to affect change, uh, the, local, um, the local communities have to really buy into uh, what's going on nationally. Uh, two minute warning. Uh, last question, uh, Henry and uh, Dr. Nett. Uh, I'll give you one question each to uh, Aja Smith running for the 41st uh, U.S. Congressional District against um, uh, House Representative Mark? Takano. Mark Takano. Yeah. Mark Takano. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Um, my question would be is that um, this is excellent what Aja did by she's going to have a sit down with this police chief. Um, are you planning to to further speaking with other community members, because it's very important that they get the police involved. Because I notice here in New York, they're not doing it. They're not involving the police uh, chief. They're not involving department heads to have a, a real meaningful discussion. As a former cop myself, 
I can tell you that they're isolating all the police. Are you planning to meet with uh, uh, different community groups and besides the police to try to get uh, this ongoing conversation in regards to the Justice Act that they're doing now? Yes, I, I do plan on doing that in the upcoming months and start building bridges and telling them what I see and what we can do to make our district better and to also resonate and hopefully more and more people start saying, you know, just because I'm a Republican, I do want to hear the Democrats' issues. I want to hear the no party preference issues and the independents and the libertarians. And so we, we really need to start having better dialogue with our elected officials and people who are appointed that are serving the community and reaching out to different organizations in my district and let them know, you know, I, I'm here to understand and we can start building bridges. And that's what we really need to do. And especially in this times, instead of um, yelling at each other, calling each other derogatory names, we need to be mature adults in this situation because the younger kids are watching this. And that's a big, huge influence on the negative impact. If we start calling each other names, they're going to do the same thing as well. And we have this continuous cycle that we can never break. So we start showing positive, we can move to our more positive solutions. Great. And final question to you, Dr. Nett. So Aja, your biggest challenge, of course, is that the incumbent always has that little edge that they already hold the seat. What kind of unique ways are you looking at pretty much bridging that gap and perhaps showing people that you are the more qualified person to be representing them in Congress? Oh, thank you for saying, you know, mentioning that. Um, well, what we're doing and what I learned the last time I ran is to reach across the different parties. And, you know, I did this before by showing his voting record and asking people, do you really like what he's doing or what, what he hasn't done, especially mm -hmm. with the national defense, when it comes to um, community bridging, instead of attacking um, different entities. I know he tried to attack our Riverside Sheriff's Department and our Sheriff Chad Bianco had to actually uh, counteract him. And that's not what a elected official should have been doing, and especially on Facebook by attacking our Riverside Sheriff's Department. He should have been sitting down with our sheriff and asking him, how, how are you making our community better? And that's one thing that I always tell people. I, I have Democrat friends there, you know, and they said, you know, we like you. We're going to vote for you again because I bring a level of reason. We may not all agree when it comes to policy, but I tell people, you know, if this, if this certain um, ideology and policy on the, on the left is not working, why don't you try to listen to me and see, and, sh and I'll show you how it will work better to better um, for our, our district, especially with federal funding, because we haven't received federal funding from him in years since he's been in office where uh, Congressman Ken Calvert, who's a Republican, he's been bringing federal funding in his district. And to start pointing out those differences uh, and showing to everybody, especially across the aisle, Republicans we already know his voting record and his stances, but actually going into the districts that are lighter blue and maybe heavier blue in different precincts and start talking to them and saying, what is it that that makes that you think that he will be better? And I can tell them how I can be better. And especially when it comes to um, small businesses, giving tax breaks, making sure that small businesses are, are very recognized and they will have, they will keep their business. And especially what's going on here in the state of California, well, we've been on lockdown. We're probably going to go locked down again and how it really affected our community and just start having these conversations as Aja Smith, but not as Aja Smith as the Republican, but Aja Smith as your, your future representative to be your stronger voice in Washington, D.C. And that's what we've been lacking here in this district is a very big, strong voice in Washington, D.C. 
to make Washington, D.C. know that we do exist and how unique and special we are here in this district. Absolutely. And we're coming at, we're coming at a hard break. We're going to be, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, we're going to be back, uh, you know, momentarily. But I want to thank uh, Aja Smith. She's running for uh, U.S. Congress, uh, uh, District 41 in California. Yes. And thank you, Dr. Netahero. Thank you, uh, Henry. Thank you. And we will thank talk you. to you very shortly. Stick around, everybody. Thank you, and have a great day.